I had a really, really amazing childhood. I had a dad that was a real taskmaster, which definitely set me in good stead for this amazing industry. My mum and dad were just a brilliant partnership. They brought me up well and they taught me to work hard, the value of money, which I know put me on the path that I am on today. My mum and dad were both brilliant cooks. They had to because my mum and dad owned a bed and breakfast. So we always sat around the table and ate together. When I told my dad that I wanted to be a chef, he was at first like, you know, really? Because the industry wasn't what it is now. You know, it wasn't so celebrated. I said, yeah, yeah, really, that's what I want to do. And he was like, well, look, you know, just if you're going to do it, do it at the best, do it at the top level. By the time I was 12 years old, I had five paper rounds, working at fruit and veg merchants five nights a week. And then I really fancied myself as a bit of an entrepreneur with um, a catalogue called Betterware. Sometimes my dad would help me and he would say to me, this isn't really cost effective. We're burning more in fuel than delivering this like rubbish. I think what's put me in good stead for this industry was this incredible work ethic that had been driven into me by my parents, but you know, in particular my dad. My mum sometimes be like, Dave, you're pushing him too hard. He's like, he's, he's, he's 12 years old, let him go out with his friends. I can't thank him enough for that because now, you know, I'm so happy that that's, that's what was instilled into me because I know that I wouldn't have got to this point in my life without it. I was 15 years old, it was coming up to GCSEs and you know when you have work experience at school and I got the Star Hotel. And I remember saying to my dad that I'm really gonna try my hardest to get a job here. I felt like I just wanted a proper job, like a more grown up job. So anyway, I got the job, it was £2.50 an hour and it kind of went from there. I said to the chef in the kitchen like, would you give me a shot in the kitchen? He chucked me a blue boiler suit, so I started off washing up. Every opportunity I got, I wanted to get involved. They used to do Breville Maker Toasties. As soon as that Romenco printer went in the kitchen, I'd stop washing up and I'd say, I'll make them. And they loved it because they didn't want to make it. I wanted to do it because I loved that feeling of making something from nothing and serving it to people. It starts with learning your craft and working for the best. And I went and worked for the best. At the time that I was in my early 20s, working for Gary Rhodes was an incredible experience. Then I went on to work for Gordon Ramsay and it was phenomenal. Scary and the toughest job I've, I've ever, ever had. And then after that, Marcus Waring. All of the chefs I've worked for have all had their own unique style and taken so much from them. but. Going to Royal Hospital, I just remember things that just literally took my breath away. The way that sauces were made, the way that the discipline, it was like SAS. So that was kind of there where I got my sort of grounding as a chef. Then I moved to Padstow and then an opportunity came to make number six, Paul Ainsworth at number six. That was where my life really, really, really changed. For me, business is about people. When you make it about people, you attract quality people. And the minute that you have quality, that's when you can then achieve incredible things. During lockdown, it was so, so hard. And there was so many kind of sleepless nights. I know that I am sort of kind of labeled as this sort of, you know, positive, happy, sort of go-lucky um, guy in that. And that's because that's what gets me through it. Sometimes I can come in and I'm down. I, I've got things on my mind. When I lost my dad four years ago, that was, you know, that was horrific. I wanted to kind of go and curl up somewhere and just kind of like just be left alone and that. But the reality is I can't because I've got a ton of people relying on me. you got to know that like you signed up for this. This is what I wanted. Lead, lead it. Be the captain of the ship. I remember going watching National Chef of the Year, you know, a competition that Gordon's done and won. Great names that have won this competition. Then all of a sudden, you're, you're sort of asked to be chairman of it. Was incredible. To summarise the brief for me, the first and foremost that you have to be focused on is flavour. Serve up just something that is absolutely mind-blowingly delicious. So the criteria for the dish is the starter needs to be a very San Sebastian Pinchos style, using all of the fish. You need to be celebrating the bream. The main course needs to be coastal lamb sourced in the UK, beautiful coastal flavours. And the dessert 
strawberries and cream. Interpret that as you will. The advice I'd give to the finalists is turn those nerves into, into good energy. You have gotta take a bit of a sports mentality to it. Block all of that out. Just think about you, look at what you're doing and it will stand you in good stead. Fail to prepare, prepare to fail. It's as simple as that. If you don't win, if you don't go through chefs, trust me, I've been there. I did Great British Menu in 2011 and won. I did Great British Menu in 2012 and I lost. I was gutted. That's when you really find out who you are as a person. And don't you want to be the kind of person that's like, yeah, okay, right, let's go again. That is one hell of a top 10. Yeah, we have got one serious competition.